Hi, I'm Jeremy Nadek, and I'm a theatre maker and academic, and I'm here with John Nobbs. Hi. And this is the Nobbs Suzuki Praxis Masterclass, where we'll look at six of the more advanced um, of the Nobbs Suzuki Praxis exercises and have a little bit of a chat. Certainly. Um, shall we get into the first one? Certainly, but I think we should just start. What's your background? Oh, my What's background. What's your background that you bring to the... Hmm background is as a uh, as a theatre maker as an actor and uh, I've trained in a bunch of different physical theatre and dance styles for about 10 or 15 years mm -hmm. and I um, had a history maybe a decade ago I'm training in the Suzuki method of actor training mm -hmm. uh, and I've just recently come back to the training through my contact with you over the last six or nine months. Yeah. I suppose I could add here that um, Jeremy has had a lot of experience especially with uh, a lot of theatre in Korea, so in some ways he's brought that that experience to studying with us in much the same way as Jackie and I had an extensive dance background which we brought to the study of Suzuki's method of training, the original system, so I think that's what's given Jeremy a, a, a different sort of set of insights mm. into what yeah. it's about and what he's about. I'm particularly interested in how Jeremy will take some of the exercises he's done with us and then transmute them, I guess, or adapt them to his own personal practice. And, and my interest in um, training and working with you guys over the last couple of months has been, for the last decade, I've been creating my own ways of training in and around the Suzuki method and oh, yeah. Buto and other traditional Korean um, forms with my colleagues between Korea and Australia. And uh, actually coming in and finding that you guys have been investigating kind of very deeply for a long time, the Suzuki method and um, putting it within a, an Australian cultural context and in, within a Western context is so, very interesting. Yes, well, yeah. we'll partly to obviously make, make a, an aesthetic-based generator for our own work, but also to, to demonstrate its universal applicability and the fact that it just needs its parochial very, very variations mm. um, would determine just how universal it is because we believe it's a system that's as valuable for theatre as say classical ballet has been for dance. Well, let's have a look at um, shaking all over or mm -hmm. vibrations, which is one of your many extensions on the on Suzuki's ten take a ten. Mm -hmm. Is that right? In terms of derivation, it was interesting because I watched a video, I think for Michael Jackson video or something, this man came on, a boy, and his came on just started vibrating on the spot. Mm. It was pretty extraordinary. And I was just so struck by its specificity, I suppose. Mm. It's very defined, it's very strong, yeah. and for some reason I sort of thought, well, I should like to see what that looks like mm. in terms of uh, making an actor do it. So, yeah. um, well, one of the things that I will get to the video in a moment, one of the things I love about this exercise is it's advanced, but it's relatively simple to set up, mm -hmm. and the benefits become almost self evident for an, for an actor over oh, the right. course of their first repetition. So, maybe we have a look at it and then Bit of a look. and see what those self evident um, benefits might be. One of the first things that I'd um, like to, you to have a bit of a chat about is those moments of transition, those moments between the um, the business with the stick and then into the stillness and uh -huh. into the um, vibrations. So it, it seems to me there's a difference between stopping for an actor manipulating time by stopping mm -hmm. and striking a pose, like oh, being yeah. very presentational with, it, with pose oh, striking. Yes. So I was wondering whether you you have any thoughts about that Well, I suppose what interested me about the exercise is, a, well, possibly another level, but the specificity, one of the things that we always talk about acting, we talk about generalised mm. movement, generalised emotion, and I guess I was struck by the fact in this situation how just thinking about one clear thing mm. and uh, vibrating the body, and then, of course, the other thing is if you just vibrate the body, 
that's a certain thing. But if you vibrate the body and actually have the stick, or in this case the broom, static, there's a real sort of level of conflict or difficulty of, mm. of trying to do one without just letting it spread through the other. Yeah. Um, and I guess that's what struck us. And of course, mm. as we'll see, we'll sort of alternate those experiences. But um, that specificity, I think, really is what breeds knowledge. Yeah, yeah. When someone says, oh, he really knows what he's doing because he's really doing this. He's not just doing lots of stuff, mm. lots of activity, which is easy, mm. um, but he's doing this very specific thing. So, And there's a certain kind of visceral quality to that. You can, you can see it in the body of an actor. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but you're making the point about the whole idea of being still mm. and I guess not being presentational, mm. not putting a pose on. Mm. And I guess the, the thing... I, I'm assuming what you're talking about here is these people look very interesting in this situation, yep. not because they're sort of holding on to something mm -hmm. or making a pose, but actually they're in a sort of a moment of suspended animation possibly. Yep. And we stress, if anything, we do this sense of softness about what you do. So mm -hmm. if you look at all of them there, you can actually see them really, um, Glenn Johnson here, you can actually see him really feeling what he's mm -hmm. doing. So he's not just holding a stick. Yep. Because of the, the function of the stick of, mm -hmm. of not doing stuff or later on you'll find doing stuff. The function of the stick means that he's got to be much more involved in it and much more sensitive mm. to its own, mm. I guess, aura, yeah. charisma. And the quality that we have here of pausing in the middle of action is the, is the same quality that we see when, when the actors themselves pause in an action. It's not, it's not that they've, they've found an aesthetically pleasing, um, in their mind, an aesthetically pleasing place to pause or a place to pose. Mm -hmm. It's actually a, it's a product of a task. It's a product of, of what they're doing. Yeah, I think the key there is when you said in their mind, mm. I think when you're suggesting there is that actors also think, oh, this will be a good thing to do, yep. as in my conscious mind goes, oh, I will do that. Well, mm. What we've found, and I'm sure you're saying this too, is that it becomes very predictable. Yeah. And the audience is going, oh, yes, he's going to do this. Whereas this just looks as though you've just stopped the action, mm. um, or they have stopped the action, and that's essentially more instinctive and mm. therefore probably more interesting to watch yeah. rather than the... You know, predictability of the, the the event that's initiated the, in the mind of the mm. actor. Great. Well, let's see how that plays out with the um, the rest of this exercise. Now we're. Uh, Alternating, so you can see the, the, the broom or the stick is actually vibrating, the body's not. Do you want to pause and say that? Yeah. Um, yes, well, so you're obviously changing the values all the time and swapping over one to the other. And I guess what you can see there, and this is the reason you say that stillness is very interesting, is really because there's, an, shall we say, an inner dialogue occurring within the performer mm. about. Or is the stick shaking enough? Or maybe I'm, I'm shaking a bit too much. It's actually not possible to do this properly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I guess one of the reasons it's such a, a valuable exercise is nobody can really get good doing it. Yep. So, and conversely, nobody looks any worse for doing it. So yep. we find that's a very great uh, sort of a, a leveller. Mm, mm. And so we're not getting into the realms of sort of talent and not talent or, yeah, yeah. or she's, she's better than he is. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I think given that nobody looks good, then what is very, really crucial is this dialogue, shall we say, mm. between the... And it's an ongoing thing. It's not as though you set the thing up and you can just yep. sit with it. It's not automatic pilot because yeah, yeah. automatic pilot won't work in this situation. Yep. Um, and it's, and it's those, kind, that, those layers of depth that come through the repetition of the experience or we often talk about accruing experiences mm -hmm. through repetition. Like the first, the first time or the first couple of times you run this exercise with a... A, a group of actors often it's about the physicality can i isolate the stick mm -hmm. can i vibrate the body can i stop but then once you gain some level of physical competence then it becomes about that dialogue like what is the what is the quality of what mm -hmm. am i doing what i'm doing what is the feeling yeah well, we stress of course that they, they try to minimize the the, the the vibration so it's not a type of dance mm. it's actually literally a reduction to something very very well almost undoable i mm. suppose mm. Yeah, and some of the images you often employ are um, that each atom is vibrating against the other, or the mm -hmm. molecules are shaking, so that it's it it does abstract it from something that the actor can think they can achieve. Mm -hmm. mm. Let's continue. And 
I guess we're looking at advanced version where they we put the hand on the floor and, and demand that mm. the hand doesn't move and that they should dance as much as possible. And I guess we're not talking about dancing as in doing something moving attractively. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're talking about something that's actually got much more moral mm. uh, impact just mm. to do max it out, we mm. talk about. And so we, we're, we're, we're not talking about somebody being attractive. We're mm. trying to move beyond that idea of attractivity mm. to something that's much more challenging. Mm. And this, the, the format that this exercise and, and many of the exercises take, it allows you to, to almost as an instructor, as, an, as a director, improvise yourself in terms of the instructions that you give. So, mm-hmm. so that the hand planted on the floor is, is, one way of, is one way of giving the actor something to engage with. Or it could be you know, moving the body around the stick. Or you know, the, There are lots of different ways that you can uh, set up uh, it's almost like an experiment for the actor to live inside. Yeah. Um, what we've found, of course, that when you do something like put the hand on the foot, it actually inhibits the actor from just doing all sorts of, once again, generalised movement. It actually, it, it, and the only demand is that you put your hand on the floor, you look at the audience, what's the second demand, um, and then, then you just do your stuff. So that's very free. Mm. But we found often with, with training, I'm not sure if you find this too, but sometimes if you don't put a strong parameter on an actor or a group of actors, they tend to sort of spin off and just do lots of stuff and it doesn't yeah. have any value. It's not necessarily unattractive, but it has no real informative value for the performer. Yeah. And certainly as the watcher, mm. I would say the same thing. You must yeah. find this too. Yeah, so absolutely. say use one arm or put the yeah. hands on the floor. Yeah. Without those strictures or without those, those demands, I guess, on the experience, then it just becomes something that's pleasurable for an actor. Like an actor often finds pleasure in improvising and, you know, ha- having a good time, mm-hmm. but th- that becomes less less interesting in terms of a, a useful process for development, whether it's the development of your aesthetic or the development of the actor's competence. Correct, or... yeah. Now, you probably can't hear it, but I've actually said in this video, I said, dance the floor. Mm. Mm. So... One of the things you find as you talk about this experimentation, this variability for the, the, <clears throat> the observer, whether it be teacher or director, to actually throw suggestions into the room itself mm. and watch how the actual actors um, shift, shift their game plan, so to speak, yep. without actually destroying the game plan. So none of these things that I throw in, or I'm sure you do, mm. uh, are meant to be interrupted so much yep. as, as a shift in consciousness. Yep. Um, so I've said here, dance the floor, which does it applies another thing other than just dancing around. Mm. And um, you don't give this sort of thing to beginners, probably because it's a little too arcane. Yeah. But for those people that do, you can actually see the shift. So they're not just dancing around, it's suddenly something that they're thinking the floor's dancing. Of course, these um, very abstract or semantic ideas mm. can be given value through the physicality of the experience itself. So um, what we've found, and I'm sure you're finding too, as you teach these things and your versions of these things, is that you can afford to give the actors, in fact, not even afford to, but you must give them more advanced and, so, shall we say, esoteric mm. uh, suggestions yes. to take the thing away from just a form of repetition with, with no shift yep. to repetition plus shift. Yep. May not be obvious there, but we're not too concerned about how, you know, clever people are doing this sort of thing and stuff, what it actually does for them. So mm. as with all our exercises, it's sort of about the speech at the end of the of the mm. ex- exercise and how that's been informed by the experience rather than whether they're um, looking good, as it were. But I have to say here it's very important too because this specificity of shaking the stick or shaking the body it's not. It's 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 a skill for what it gives you as an actor. 
Mm. The knowledge it gives you as an actor rather than the skill itself, because you're not likely to do this on stage yeah. or that would ever use something like this on the stage. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so the 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 experience is is less about the the physical skill or the strength or the or the, the aesthetic yeah. uh, and the ta- of the talent, yeah, the display of talent, and more about the, the quality that um that they is a away. product that they take away from they it. They take away from yep. it. So. And going through that experience like like having these demands placed on an actor. Mm-hmm. Actually, the repetition of having what might seem like uh, unreasonable demands placed on an actor, um, like that's a useful experience for an actor to go through again and again. Well, I think so. I mean, one of the things that we brought in dance to theatre practice, dancers are always either always looking in a mirror, so they're always aware of how imperfect they are. Yeah. No dancer likes to look at themselves in a mirror. Yeah. And so, of course, what essentially a dancer is trying to, trying to attempt to do with their body, which is a series of lumps and bumps, is to mm. come up with these absolute things like yeah. 180 degrees yeah. or 90 degrees and things like so supposedly perfect experiences. And they're not possible, really. Yeah. But the attempt to attain them gives such a a sense of moral achievement on the, on yeah. the, on the, the dancers. Mm. And so this act of doing it really is, that means they, they move beyond their ordinary body mm. frame, their ordinary body capabilities. Mm. Dancers and singers can yep. do these amazing things, mm. really, and it, it, it actually does impart on the, the actual dancer this sense of being larger than life yep. too, this yeah. charisma thing. So we thought of applying those types of principles to the way an actor prepares, yep. because after all, an actor really wants to develop the charisma, mm. and something like this, with its ability to do something that's not quite possible, yep. but actually quite... I can say achievable, but you know the, the act of doing it is quite enjoyable, and it's yes. actually quite easy to sort of get a modicum of skill at yeah. it. That 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 attempt then actually paradoxically does actually equip them with a lot of physical physical skill because they actually have a physical knowledge about themselves in a way they know themselves a bit yeah. more. Yeah, and that physical awareness, that physical physical skill, is a byproduct of the training. It's not. It's not the. It's not the the means, or it's not no. the end point no, of the not, training. No, it's not the aim of the training. Yeah. The aim of the training is to create. Uh, they have a physical experience mm. where that then transforms you, yeah. especially by ex- by extension your 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 speaking mm. voice. And it help it helps to minimise, I guess, the subjectivity of the actor's craft. You oh, you often point. hear from um, acting teachers that you know it's different from dance and music because you you the, like an actor can't kind of tell when they're doing well or or it's it's very very subjective from the outside whether or not yeah, an actor course. is getting it is there whereas if if you have a time and space format which you know the the non suzuki praxis is yes and you know underlying that the suzuki method is then there, there is something in terms of time and space that an actor can grasp onto and then this the the subjectivity is in the quality and you know the you can tell from the training or you once you start instructing or viewing the training like that those qualities become very palpable once you once you lock down the the body yes yeah that's a very good point you make i think that this 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 idea of, of the space time format because like you say if you're doing a period in a dance you fall over you know you fall over yeah, it's yeah. just no question yeah. and acting is much more complicated than that because so much of acting is really about do you are you attractive to an audience mm. really and that's a very very ambiguous yeah. um, set of measurements if mm. you like and so the more you can cut those down the more the actor's not concerned with that aspect mm. of the performance. Mm. Mm. The act of doing this thing, you can actually see the expression in Glenn, yep. Glenn Johnson's face there. You, you know he's going through some interesting experience, don't you? Yep. You know he's actually sort of going through something. He's not looking. A, he's not looking stupid, which is yep. good. Um, he does look, and he looks very, very connected. Everything about his body is very, very. You know, it's, mm. it's 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 in tune with itself, shall we say, or con- congruent with itself. And you actually, I find when I'm looking at him now, I think, well, what's he, do- what's he thinking? I wonder what he's mm. doing. What, what? So I'm actually, as the observer, going, what is he doing? Mm. Or question what he's doing, rather than going, oh, he's, you know, banging a stick or he's vibrating yeah. a stick. So yeah. that um, plurality, I think, makes him much more compelling. Mm. And you'd call that charisma. I want, yeah. to see, I want to see what he's going to do. And even me, knowing him as I do, mm. I'm still interested in what he's going through because I don't know what he's going through, but I know there's mm. something going on there that is of interest. Mm. And as as unreasonable as some of the exercises might seem for, for an outsider, it's it's more reasonable than having an asking actors to stand on stage and be charismatic or be profound or to be that's deeply right. connected. I mean, that, that's not that's not 
they're not useful instructions for an no, actor. No, they're not really. Even though that's what you're looking for. Yes. I think uh, incumbent on people like ourselves as directors is what you provide is one thing to say, you know, you should be grounded or be charismatic, mm. but to not give them the, the matrix in which to, to explore that, to, mm. to find that, to discover that is actually um, not fair. Irresponsible. Yes, yeah. not fair because yeah. you've just blurted out some criticism without providing a backup. Yeah, yeah. Mm. Shall we keep watching? Yes, well, we should. Yeah. Shaking all over. I think I've asked them to dance this or to take just to keep going. But what they're doing there, I guess, is they're keeping their mode, their sort of story going. So now the shaky again. And we always finish any routine with a speech. Mm. So not not only is the actor keeping keeping their narrative going through motion, but also I mean here it's a vibrating stillness, but also in stillness be, being able to continually amplify the narrative, keep it going on by saying the speech. Mm. Yes, well the whole point I suppose is if you're doing movement and then speaking and not relating that movement to speaking, it's not really of much value apart yeah. from some sort of aerobic. Yeah. Um, achievement and so we always say well you should be able to speak in any position any situation mm. um, and of course you sit, as you say I think it's a very good point you say you've got the story going and then you're going to speak well that's actually part of the story yeah. I guess and you could say you're going to speak to the story or speak from the story all sorts of add-ons if mm. you like or plug-ins mm. um, and yeah that's really crucial otherwise what's the exercise for oh it's just a physical experience well yep. You can sort of get that playing darts at the pub, really. Mm. If it has got a, a speech at the end or during it, mm. then of course I don't see what's really about the text. Yep. So that's what they're doing now, obviously, which we can't hear, but. Mm. Okay, so this is a pretzel. Yeah. So we decided to do the pretzel, I suppose. I certainly give this to beginners because the 10 tech at 10 is quite a complicated exercise. Yeah. It's quite hard to do, really, because you're setting people on either end of mm. the stage space and they're automatically more on their own. Yep. So they feel more isolated, more vulnerable. Um, this is exactly the same exercise, except we, we, we start back and come forward. Mm. So... The crucial thing, of course, is they're all touching each other. Yeah, um, yeah and the, the ten take a ten often it can feel like a very intimidating thing, also to set up, like as as a director, as an is as an instructor, with with um, actors without any kind of background, like mm, in, in, in in that really heightened physicality mm -hmm. in that mythical poetic space. And so this just the the very fact that it's an ensemble, it, it's more, um, it's more. Of an ensemble experience, yeah. Yes. Well, that's true because to, to even demonstrate the, the 10 take of 10 properly it takes quite a while to do yeah. that. <laughs> yes, yes. And all you need in a group like this is one person to actually to know the actual structure of the music yep. and the rest by their nature will actually follow. Yep. And, of course, what we find are much a lot of our exercises are about and actors often find themselves alone on stage. Mm. And once you're alone, of course, you're, you're isolated by yep. definition. How, how can you how can you feel as though the space that surrounds you is part of your world, it's part yep. of your cosmos? And of course, I'm standing here like mm. as a cup with you. Mm. That's an, I mean, very hard to act on your own anyway. You yes. know, always know how, how much easier it is to yep. perform with a, a partner. Mm. Um, so we've extended that to have five or six or ten or fifteen. Um, mm. And I guess I stress here, I suppose that this is a bridging exercise. Yes. Yeah. This touching is a metaphor for your sense of association with the world yep. and of course the floor especially because that's mm. what we're standing on. But the air around us and any objects in the space, for instance, any sets, they're part of our cosmos. Yep. And an actor should think of that and mm. see that they're, that, they're, that connection between myself and any other object in the room is actually a thing. Yes. It's not a void. Yes, and it's something palpable. One thing that I find fascinating about 
about the pretzel is it really heightens this sense that it's a, it's a sense of individuation in a communal space, mm-hmm. which is I mean it's a beautiful metaphor for what we do as theatre makers mm-hmm. and as and as actors. Let's see if we um, if we can't oh. see anything as we watch it. So this is some suggestion. So as you can see here, I guess they're all they're all working together, mm. but they're not necessarily working at the same time. And neither they're neither walking in time with the music. See, they've all got different mm-hmm. gates, um, and they're not walking in time with anybody else. And we say, well, we walk through the music. So we're seeing the music as a landscape. This is another interesting perception that you're dancing to music. You're sort of moving through it. You're seeing it as actually an oral equivalent of a set, mm-hmm. and you're with everybody else. So James, there. It's very aware, it's a very short version because of the set, the size of the set, but you actually can see how he's sensitised to those mm. around him. Yeah. And it's not a forced connection, it's quite a soft and gentle but powerful connection between well, between the actors. And you, you see this in a moment as they morph. Well, what we stress is that they don't touch with the palms of the hand, mm. which would be the easy thing to do. Mm. Now they're going through a morph of taking this trumpet phrase. Mm. Now, of course, they have to carry it back. Mm. That's one of the most uh, interesting um, components, I think, of, well, of the Ten Teka Ten, and I think we highlighted this in the um, Shaking All Over as well, but that those moments of transition where where time changes or oh, yeah. space changes mm-hmm. and what like what an actor does with, with, that, with that moment, whether an actor just changes direction or whether they imagine outside of their body, like forces acting on the oh, body. Yes. Well, I think these are potential. There's no particular, um, we don't stress anything. They should be thinking of anything mm. particularly. We don't care what they think, really, providing they obey the rules. Yeah. In fact, I think it's very important that they have their own story mm. and that, that the longer that doesn't you know, get take them away from the actual experience mm. itself. But that's the very interesting thing you make, I guess, it's the point about the transition Mm. And it's like it, it transcends being just a series of steps. Mm-hmm. I mean, it, it's palpable. You can you can see in those transition moments um, where the, where the entire ensemble acts as one. Like the, the it, it it's almost like an electric moment. The, the space shifts around the actor, and it's that something different from just you know dosy doing around the space. Oh, I'm going to take two steps forward, one step back. You know, it's Quite. a different yeah. thing. Well, the fact is, this actually looks choreographed, doesn't it? Yeah. You'd actually swear that's been made because it's so coherent with itself. Mm. And and I guess once again, I was talking about Glenn before. Look at Claire's, mm. Claire's visage, as it were. You can see she's obviously doing what she's doing, but she's quite aware and she's really thinking about, I guess, the stuff outside her mm. as much as she herself yeah. as an individual. So rather than having self, self-importance, mm. we talk about self-definition. Yeah, yeah. Mm. It's interesting you, the, the thing you say about coherence, but this coherent... Um, acknowledgement of self or kind of the mind and the body being integrated that that coherence on an individual level here transforms into coherence on an ensemble level so yeah. the the knowledge of the self within inside that com- of, the knowledge of the self strengthens the communal mm-hmm. mm. oh, and, and vice versa too of course yeah. one of suzuki's great aphorisms is that you can't be an individual unless you're part of a group yeah mm. and you can see here they're not looking the same as each other they've all got their own story yeah um but within that story, they, as you, uh, I, you'd have to say that their individuation, they're doing their own story, the fact that it's parallel to or encompassed by or framed by a, another set of stories like that mm. makes that story more interesting yeah. by, by comparison with the other stories going on around her mm. and also her awareness of the other stories going around her. So there's yeah. two things there. There's actually a sort of a physical mm. structure but there's also her attitude to that structure. Yeah, yeah. And we would say that this shift in invocation, mm. shift of, of perception of yourself, not just me standing there being interesting or hopefully interesting, yeah. of, of me being part of this group, um, is, is self-generating in terms of knowledge. Yeah, yeah. So, of course, the hard thing here is you make something and you can see Glenn in a more extreme position. Mm. 
How does he sustain that as he's going back? Um, and the answer is, you sustain it by your proximity to the other person. Yeah. You're using your attachment, as it were, yeah. your sensitivity attachment, because this boundary layer between us as, as, mm. as, as people is born of two things. Me listening to you and me telling you. Mm. Mm. Yeah, yeah. And so that, that, that reciprocal sensitivity is absolutely yeah. crucial. And yeah self-generating yeah and that i mean that kind of connection takes you know suzuki's aphorism about um knowing yourself from a group it takes it out of something a, a, a trite or cute thing to say into an into an actual kind of um in an actual like physicalized metaphor this idea that that i'm, I'm telling you and you're telling me is the same thing as me listening to myself or me listening to an audience yes. like it's all of these little um, cycles of these little it? looping cycles. Yes, and yes. it's not—it's not just something to say; it's something to experience and something to feel. How do you mean that? Well, it's um, this idea of of knowing yourself and knowing the group. Like you know, that th those are words, but without the format to explore oh, that yes. within. It's one thing to think these things; it's another thing to actually experience mm. them. And of course, you can think all sorts of things, but mm. the experiencing of them. And I guess you also got to say there's a sense of them experiencing stuff. And us as witnesses, or even mini audience, yeah. having a sense of of um, affirming that by mm -hmm. watching it. Yeah. So this is performative. This is not something they're doing. They're, they're, they know we're here, so yeah. to speak. And even though it's, you know, seven or eight years later in yeah. another place, they still are expecting us to be here. So this this inbuilt expectation is, is actually a great generator, and it's preparing them for that. Same sort of thing that will happen on stage or film or yeah, radio. Absolutely. Well, we're about to move on to Hanging Five. Mm -hmm. uh, I'll just here, I'll just, the, yeah, yeah. We're about to do Heroes of Us, but just to see what happens here because. No, it didn't. Yeah. Forget that. What in, why did you want to talk about this one? <laughs> this one here, Hanging Five. I think it's a it's a fascinating study of space. It's a it's once again it's a it's a relatively simple exercise to describe in terms of the use of space, uh -huh. but the the way that the actors negotiate that in the moment is endlessly fascinating. And oh, yeah. you know, towards the end of the um towards the end of the improvisation you can throw any number of layers on mm -hmm. on the actors. Even there's opportunity during the middle as well. But just that that kind of those moral demands of of keeping keeping your eyes on the audience or keeping open to the audience watching and but also having to know where you are in space I when you say moral demand what do you mean well so that so the there's the there's the demands to um there's the demands to the space you know oh, yeah. keep, keep keeping keeping a contact whether mm -hmm. it's at the back wall with whatever you've got down the front of the space but also the 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 demands that a director sets in terms of like setting up the exercise you know mm -hmm. i've i'm I've been asked to keep my feet against the wall and to look forward and to do some kind of surfing business. How do I deal with that without kind of freaking out and disconnecting mm. from the exercise? Mm -hmm. I think that's like that's a fascinating place to train inside. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's also quite a cute song, and you know, got a lot of self. What's the word? Self reference. No, not self. Self deprecation. Yes, yes, absolutely. In yeah. a way, I actually thought of this exercise because we built this training floor, which had a definable edge to it. It's a sort of series of modules which you mm. pack together. And I was looking for something, I suppose, that actually described the floor. Mm. So when we first did it, can't see it here, we first did it, I said you actually had to paint five toes on the edge of the floor. Mm. And then when you went to the back, you did much the same thing. So, of course, I suddenly thought that was interesting because what that fit, two things come out of that. One, you've effectively created a sense of what the space is. You've yeah. made it by your physicality mm. or your movement. And the other interesting thing that comes out of all this, and something you're alluding to too, is that when, if you have to all put your five toes on the exact moment, which is mm. the H of hanging five in this context, um, it means that whatever you're doing individually, wherever you were, you just had to be yeah. there at a certain time, which sort of means you were always together too. Yes, absolutely. In your own world, but in this combined world. So I don't think, I mean, I think every one of those people there would never feel alone. They'd feel as though they're, with a group mm. of people doing yeah. it. And that's an immensely um, supportive yeah. uh, context. Yeah. 
and it's and it's it's once again like it's an exploded form of the ten decker ten. Like yeah. I know the, the things that we were just discussing with the pretzel, like the 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 fact that we've um, you've chopped and changed the use of of time and space, use a different piece of music. That's that, but actually that kind of communal individuality is is once again key. Well, yeah. What we stress, I suppose, that really all the exercises are about the same stuff. It's yeah. the core body strength. It's the center of the body. It's the centering of the agglomeration of all the forces so they mm. become one collective holistic expression rather than a series of sporadic mm. events and all the exercise represents different ways of achieving that i yeah. suppose certainly these sorts of things do i mean the other mm. ones actually add other things too of course um yeah okay let's have a look so of course this is a great exercise for beginners too because everybody can imagine them on a surfboard. Yeah. And, and we don't really know what they're going through, we don't mm. care. Provided they go. So you can see that amazing sense of togetherness happens yes. because of their specificity of time. And now you're in the beach and you're feeling mighty fine. You turn your board around for the second time. You make it out the back. The swells are coming fast. The first one out small. And so, so I, I really sort of encourage the actors to become more elliptical with their imagery, mm. I suppose, without yeah. demanding it. The only demand is this still. So you can see the sense of togetherness. Mm. It's a knowledge of themselves and also the group. So I've said shark attack here, make it more Australian. Mm. All right. <laughs> You've lost a leg to the shark, so you're sort of doing it again. Mm. It's the, like negotiating of time and space, but also ever-changing imagery mm -hmm. as well. Like the, 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 this work is as much about training the imagination as it is about training the body, I, I think. Yeah, very much. I would agree with that. Um, and I think also as a director stroke teacher, you can't just ask actors to do it again but more. Yeah. You know, yeah. It's annoying me utterly as, as, a, as any sort of performer. So you think, what do you base, if, if you can't just say you know, more turbo, which you, mm. you can't really do, you've got to say, well, more depth. Hmm. More depth of field. So yep. these, I'm not sure what this, but we never really talk about what people think about that much, except I'll say something like, speak like a shark's leg or something, hmm. the shark's bitten off. Speak like a piece of floating seaweed. Well, that in itself is a form of sort of self deprecation, isn't it? Hmm. And so you can see here what, what the, the demand is, the only demand here is not so much that they you know, sound like a you know, sound good as being a seaweed because mm. nobody really cares. But the um, the demand there was the um, this idea that you've got to keep your story going. Yeah, you had a story when you're moving forward as the music finishes and you end up with no music. Mm. Keep that zone going, if you like, another yeah. expression like that. And then you're saying, then you've got to take that away from that. It's not yeah. just dependent on the actual music to do mm. this. You're not dancing to the music. You're actually responding to some sort of triggers inside the music. Yeah. And that's very important. Uh, you know, we say the story is the most important thing in a funny sort of way. The demand is crucial too, but the demand yeah. is only there to frame the story. Yeah, absolutely. And if the only thing you can really do is say, I don't care, I've lost my, you know, I've lost my concentration, I've fallen yeah. over, I've done all yeah. this, but I'll keep my story going. Yeah, absolutely. And of course, that's a form of stagecraft too, isn't it? Because the, the audience doesn't, in fact, the audience won't pick up anything's wrong, mm. really, because you've kept your umbilical relationship with them very much alive and 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 having and having actors that are that are trained i guess to keep the story alive no matter what the demands placed on them whether they're demands they could foresee through their physical score or through how they think the play unfolds mm -hmm. or whether it's something that happens kind of spontaneously in the space there's something palpable about actors that are that you know can run with that Mm. That you know they they they're not going to be spooked, and if they're spooked, it's for a microsecond. And they've already made a decision on how Correct. on how yes. to how to bounce back. Yes, I mean things are always going to go wrong on stage. People mm. forget lines, we forget lines, the other, you know other mm. actors forget lines, and you've got to deal with what that mm. means because that's a new type of moment, isn't it? Yes, 
that was the old story. Well, that was then, this is now, how do I do that? Mm. Not only that, how do I take that otherwise negative event and spin it so it becomes a sort of a positive shift? Yeah. Mm. And it's quite possible to do that. We've often seen it, of course, where yeah. something happens and they go, they get better. Yeah. So what this does is just putting it actually in the training context so that when it happens on the deck, it's not a surprise. Mm. And that has direct applicability for actors that go from this kind of work and then into, for example, scene classes or that, you know, that they, they, they do personalization work with another actor. Mm -hmm. you, you don't know what that actor is going to throw at you, you know. So like the, the fact that this kind of very physical work, this very um, strict kind of time and space work, the, the skills or the experiences or the qualities that we're training towards are actually applicable to what you traditionally think of as as actor training or, yes, or scene work. Well, that's a paradox, isn't it? Because it's what, what I've, I've discovered very early in this thing is because I'd say do staccato, small speeches, staccato. Mm. And what I found fascinating was when you do staccato, you actually, it makes you good at slow-mo. Mm. So you're not training in slow-mo, you're doing slow-mo, you're actually doing this thing called staccato, which is j -j 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 -j. Yeah. And that type of, you wouldn't think that was good for other stuff, but being yeah. good at staccato. But in fact, it teaches you sort of, shall I say, a binomial view of movement, on, yeah. off, on, off. Yeah. And all of those things just give you greater knowledge about yourself. Mm. So this isn't, uh, this can easily be seen as a sort of an acting style. But in fact, it's not. It's just a highly formatted training mm. modality. And um, you, it, it's good for all sorts of stuff, not just what it is, because you know, we don't do this on the deck. Yeah. We don't do this on stage. No. So, yes, it's a good point. Here we're doing a thing called string theory, which I thought of one day. I suppose I was thinking of this, this Einstein idea about the connection between the Earth and the Moon. Well, before Einstein, this was sent as a sort of like big chain that mm. held the two things together. And he said, well, actually, it's moving. It's, it's changing. It's actually sort of stretching and bending and all sorts of things. So mm. I thought, what if you do that? And as we watch here, you'll see that they... Um, They'll see, they'll see their speech as something in space yep. that actually is a thing, mm. like a lozenge, if you like, or some like one of these funny little balloons that sort of stretches mm. out. And that actually helps you see that your words are not just something that comes out of your mouth as a sort of a, a spurt of energy, yeah. but they're a thing in, in and of themselves. Yep. And the, the, the idea behind invoking this conception of it as something like this mm. that's moving, that I can see it shaping, well, give it a, a type of physicality or physical value, yeah. which is very apprehensible yeah, yeah. from the observer. Um, it's, often, it's, it's often very difficult to frame for an actor a way for them to imagine the physicality of their voice because, of course, the, the voice is just an extension of our physical self. It's mm -hmm. just another manifestation of what our body's mm -hmm. doing. But by almost externalising where we place the voice or you, you you can actually see the space that your voice is inhabiting yeah. that gives you feedback and then so if you're doing all of the other voice work like listening to your voice speaking to yourself and speaking mm -hmm. this added layer on top just adds a, a richness or a, a or a spatial almost a spatial awareness mm -hmm. of the voice well yeah our toe was talking about you know speeches are like things in space yeah. they're not yeah. just they're not ideas yeah and we tend to get obsessed with the sort of intellectual idea of mm. text. And we should also be thinking it's actually got a physical value as mm. well. And it's extremely easy. This, once again, this is um, heuristic. This is self-teaching. Yeah. You don't have to say the actors be good at this stuff. They'll just naturally go, oh, okay. And I was praying to a sunburst breaking forth this day where I lay my hands once more on hell and mm. my wife. I mean, it's very easy to consider. And, of course, inside that is a sense of, oh, okay, so this thing here was also this thing here. Yeah. So it's not exhausting, yep. it's sustaining itself, it's feeding back, it's mm. looping, all those things. And that can't help but be Absolutely. a value. Yeah, yeah. You are, I've I've seen I've seen my voice made manifest yeah. and I've you know I've spoken to the space and the space is speaking yeah. to me. Mm. So it's a very simple tool. Mm. Something else. Something else. Well, this is a combination exercise of a 10 take a 10 and a set of statues, I suppose. Mm. Um, what do you find about this? I find this is a very uh, interesting intersection between instinct and um, habitual movement. Oh, yeah. So 
when 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 you've got a, a second body there that you're in contact with, in much similar way to when we're pretzel. doing the pretzel, the you can't just rely on your own physical habits. You can't just rely on what what your body and mind think feels mm, good. You've got something good. else to respond to, mm -hmm. and on a much quicker time scale than the pretzel. So it's kind of you're shaking you're shaking your knowledge of yourself. Okay. Yeah. Oh, well, let's. So, we'll so this is a combination of ten to ten and well, I suppose statues really. Mm. How do you carry it forward? Yeah, like moving, almost like, like moving statues, okay. maybe. So I'm not sure. I think you've got your eyes shut here, mm -hmm. yep. and, and Scott has got his eyes open. So he's the driver. So, I just, I suppose I listened to this song by Eddie Cochran that has this amazing refrain which goes, mm. she's something else, it's something else. I thought, well, why don't you say that? Yeah. And provide a sort of a vocal explosion inside yourself and then you have to actually make some sort of gesture mm. without knocking the other guy out. Yeah. Um, so there's the public sens sensitivity thing. And maintain contact, you swap over there, so you go from eyes shut to eyes open or vice versa. And then we, do, we spend about, say, two or three seconds just absolutely still there so mm. we can locate ourselves and mm. under some sort of arrangement. And then, of course, you're, we'll just go on, I guess. Yep. So now you're driving. So you have to be very, very sensitive of what Scotty's predicaments might mm. be. And this predicament's been arrived at instinctively. You've just blown yourself into some sort of position mm. like you're hit by a grenade. So you're working out... At the same time, you're very, 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 very aware or very sensitive or very mm. responsible for this other person. Yeah. And we find that, that that just the act of being responsible for somebody else in the space is extremely in instructive. Yeah, absolutely. It's this, um, once again, this intersection between, well, it's kind of co-production of movement of meaning but also this fine-tuned negotiation and it's that that fine-tuned negotiation between two bodies which you know it's a it's another thing that's kind of easy to say but unless unless you're practicing it it's you're, you're well, never gonna the most important thing is to provide this is one thing to talk about this stuff and we're always talking about this stuff everything mm. we talk about is the same as what everybody talks yeah, about. yeah absolutely but i think what this does is provide a context and some so it's like idiot-proof exercise. Mm. You don't have to be clever to do this. You just have to be sensitive. Yes. You find yourself in all sorts of weird, strange predictions. And think, how do you walk in this situation? Yeah. And you know, at the end of the day, you're going to have to say the speech in this funny position. Mm. So part of your whole training is to provide this sustainable oh, mm. process. So you're obviously life. listening to Scotty very profound as much as you can. So you're having your own experience. The and then and you're, I think you're moving here at the same yes, time. It doesn't look like that, but you are. So how do you move and talk at the same time? It sounds obvious and easy, but in fact it's not. You've got this physical connection, and then you've got the connection through listening and hearing. And in between there, there's a like psychic connection as well. Yeah. Well, it's all of them, and just do it. Hmm? Just do it, and stuff will happen. So I don't. I think you find we have chats after this, and everybody's always amazed at how profound the experience has been. Hmm. And you provide, I would say, an idiot-proof exercise. Mm. Because you don't have to know anything to do. You just have to know the speech. That's yeah. the only thing you have to know. And so I've said here... Yeah, eyes open and then to the audience. The audience. And we found that something that Jackie introduced a few years back of actually taking it to the audience. Mm. This idea of something, 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 and taking it to the audience. Um is quite it's extremely profound it's got something to do with we've got a story mm. of life here and we're going to take it to the audience and the act yeah. of taking it to the audience is actually uh i don't know it's a, sh a shift in 
our story becomes mm. their story. Our story becomes something they can actually be part of. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So, and I have to say, you see, you look very different there. Mm. Um, I can't say what that difference is, but there's, I, I would say that that's a new you mm. of some sort. Yeah, and that's what you find um, when training, especially when repeating things you know, over and over again. The 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 golden moments in training is when you do find a new version of yourself every time, and and that's something that. Well, sometimes it does surprise you, but you have to be open. You have to be listening. Yeah. You have to be. You can't you be waiting. It. You can't expect it, and you can't predict it will happen. Of course, it generally happens to all of us, and it has happened to everybody. Mm. I, I find I think you're an experienced performer, but if a beginner has something like this, they actually that revelation. I'll call it a revelation means they never look stupid again. Mm. And that in itself is a very valuable yeah. tool. Yeah. Um, and it's a very, that's a very freeing idea that once, once you know something, then you, you, you're not going to look, you're not going to look no, foolish or awkward. Found, or... I found that in every, every single instance of this situation for people who've yeah. actually had very little experience, once they do that, they, and they carry that with them. I was with Suzuki once and we had this situation with John Broke in academic and John had had no experience of doing anything. He only had three or four days with some of us. Mm. And then he had to train to climb Suzuki. So he got up there and did his stuff. He said to me, he said, he said, I felt I didn't know anything. Mm. And then I said, but you felt everything. Yeah. And that's the context. But then Suzuki came up afterwards and said, how did it feel? Yeah. And instead of laughing and for being some sort of bozo academic, you know, unco-academic, he said, well, how, well, so you can see it's even Suzuki. Mm. They were talking about a man who'd done three hours training yeah. before he had to stand in front of the, yeah. the main man. Um, even at that level, he's Suzuki was going, well, what's going on there? I wonder yeah. what's going on. I wonder what I, you know, so that, that knowledge actually sucks the audience in, doesn't yeah. it? They want to know what that knowledge is. Yeah. And how do you, the question is, how do you provide it an actor? There's a, a very good example of it right there. Mm. Red right hand. Ah, red right hand. It's one of my favourites to watch. Yeah. A lot of people's favourite to do. It's my favourite to do, I think. Okay. Um, yeah. What intrigues you about this? For me, some of the most profound moments I've had in the, in the Nob Suzuki training has been with red right hand. And actually, t today, we, um, we had a training session today and we, we stood on a spot oh, on, on boxes with yes. red right hand. And just the, just that act of observing observing yourself and seeing the effect that what you're doing has on what you're presenting wow so like you it's a it's a far it's a very um and you're not you're not observing yourself as a whole you're not observing yourself as if in a dance mirror no, like quite. with a whole ensemble you're you're observing you're your face you're, portable, you're yeah. right there haven't you yeah and so there's, there's something it's it's hard to define but there's something really palpable about yeah well, we've found, of course, when I've done it, when we first did, I got this idea from, we're doing a thing called Heavy Metal Hamlet. And for some reason, somebody suggested, why don't you try doing it with a mirror in your hand? Because I'm playing Hamlet and I, I do all these soliloquies as you do. <laughs> and he said, why don't you just get the little Hamlet and hold it and just talk the thing? And I was just absolutely staggered mm. at what it meant because suddenly I was talking to myself. I was watching myself talking to myself. There's all yeah. these series of, 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 of looping Ad additions mm. and each one with it obviously corroborates something about the other so you yeah. actually have these things and of course you're carrying it with you mm. you're looking from this angle you're looking from that angle mm. you're talking to it you're watching yourself talk to it it's yeah. extremely mm. um yeah. and that's why I, that's why I started we started using mirrors and we start to use mirrors in all contexts mm. so yeah, and because of the demands of this um the demands of the grammar of this particular exercise the that the actor or the participant knows what they're looking for mm -hmm. in in terms of physically knows what they're looking for mm -hmm. and so like they it's it's not just a it's not just a narcissistic i guess uh or watching oneself actually in those frozen moments which we'll see in a moment that's the opposite like, of narcissistic yeah you're 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 watching for any any movement that's going to belie what's going on underneath. yeah the yeah, point mm. um let's have a look yeah Thank you. 
So once again, we don't say how you should do that. The only thing we demand, I suppose, is the audience should be able to see you watching yourself. So, if you know the words, we say speak the words. We say don't sing the words, like Nick Cave is doing. Don't get too far away from Nick Cave is, but don't copy him either. So once again, this compound relationship. If you don't know the words, don't say anything. Mm. I should have got no idea how I thought of this. <laughs> no idea. I don't. I do know that if, I can look at the answer since. So here's this big swipe. Swipe, swipe. Stop there. Mm. We also call this swipe card. Mm. And I suppose maybe I was trying to sort of emulate something like. Um, uh, Francis Bacon's mm. distorted paintings, yeah. which I find very compelling. Yeah. And you can see here that yourself and Kristen have made these very, very grotesque faces. Now, you're going to have to carry that face for the rest of this verse mm. until the next time you do swipe, swipe. But the reason we do it with the hands and not just pull faces is because it makes it more visceral. It makes it more of a an experience where you have actually destroyed your face. Yeah in one yep. complete and really touching face not just sort of it's not sort of thing you want to do with makeup on a model yeah, yeah. but uh yeah you really do that and just take it to the thing and of course there's also a sort of snail trail isn't it as you do it as well yeah yes it's a sort of thing that happens there too yeah and that's very interesting and very compelling mm. um and it's done without any thought so yeah. much as i'm just going to white man's yeah and just deal with whatever that might be yeah so there's a little surprise about it too as so you mm. come up with this thing and and it takes it out of that realm of invention or or, or, or your prescription or needing to do something or present something. Uh -huh. Actually, you, it's the like in a lot of the exercises, what the actor does with their body is is a product of of um, an experience rather mm -hmm. than just something that they're generating. And then the fact that you have to go to immediately towards appreciating that and and loving that in yeah. the mirror. Yeah, it's uh, James, one of our actors, once said. I don't recognise this thing. I don't yeah. recognise what is this? Yeah, and of course it's you. You made it. Mm. Um, so you're seeing yourself in a very different light, aren't you? Absolutely. I mean, most people might pull faces, but they don't actually know what they look like. Mm. Suddenly, you had this third person sense of who you are, mm. as in John is this thing, not just mm. I am, but John is. Yeah. So you actually are your own third eye, yeah. so to speak, um, and. That in itself gives you a much more charismatic view of yourself because you've got this idea of yourself as something outside of the I am, mm. away from the I am to the I am plus he is. Yeah. So let's continue. Now, of course, you're trying to say this. Now, it doesn't matter if you know the words now because you <laughs> can't say them properly anyway because the, the demand is not to move anything. That's mm. extremely difficult. Yeah. And you're still trying to sort of do it properly. and. I would say that you're in a state of grace at the moment because you're sort of that grotesquery mm. is a form of, of, of complete unknowledge and it's certainly uncivilized. Mm. So, sort of talking to yourself, I guess I'm not sure what you're imagining, but I often think that I'm very, very, I've got a beautiful voice and I look very attractive mm -hmm. and all those things. So, it's, it's a state of grace. Yeah. And you suddenly you can get a very spicy, don't you? Mm. I mean, just the look of you is interesting. It's not as if it's not as if you pulled a face. It's yeah. something else. Haven't pulled a face. Haven't done anything. Just have kind of felt. You felt the physical experience. Yeah, this, and this hand to that physical experience. Your face yeah. and turned you into something else, and something you could not have imagined. Yeah, something you probably couldn't have made. Mm. So. Yeah, let's continue and watch this. So, so, you can see it just changes. It becomes very interesting. I'm not even sure what that is. It looks the other, doesn't it? It starts yeah. to look other. And I find that very, very... I'm not sure what that means, if you know what I mean. But it yeah. is very, very compelling.
As far as you well, I don't know how you feel about it, but I'd, I'd say, well, I thought it was really fine and great. Yeah. Really well, it, I mean, it definitely is a, it's an experience in, it's going a step further than just coming to terms with your appearance or coming to terms with what you're doing. It's yeah. actually, I mean, that's one layer, but then actually going deeply into the experience. Yeah. This, this is my face. This is what's happening yeah, now. Yeah, this is me. This is what I'm living with in this moment. And it's going to change as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Here we're asking the actors to sort of delicately, delicately trace out the outline of their visage. I guess to measure it, to contextualise it or something. Mm. I don't know what that means, but the stress is the delicacy. Mm. I guess you could say you're sort of discovering stuff about yourself. Mm. And see, once you can see your face just changes then. Yeah. And look at that now. This, this thing becomes much, much more mythical. Yeah, I mean, I mean it, it's fas it's fascinating, um, the the structure of the or the form of the exercise is to not change, but we're always changing. Like mm -hmm. it, it's to it's to not move, but yeah, 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 but, yeah, yeah. I mean, off like often not not even this exercise, but whether we're doing statues or voodoo or something, like the finding a, a deeper quality to stillness or expanding stillness in in ways and that, like, this is almost like mimicking not mimicking it's guiding the actor through that process okay, I see. and it's one way in it's that self to, that touch how you, do you, you mean well you can we're kind of guiding the actor through the process of deepening an experience oh, yeah. and so in in this instance it's observing keeping still but also having that that force feedback and then whatever else is going on inside the head like yeah. whether it's self-love whether it's self-definition well, yes well I and mean, that's can be anything you like mm. really we don't have mm. a stipulation there the only thing is the softness mm. i demand that it's soft and soft. delicate yeah. and slow not just sort of fitting up time um mm. and then of course you can probably that, that and of course that the, the dialectic between that sensitivity of the touch and mm. the grotesque the grotesquery of what there is being touched must have an interesting effect mm. because it's just such a wide distance, isn't mm. it? I find suddenly you look at that stuff and you think, that's a mask. I mean, that's not him. Mm. Is that him? It, I've never seen you look like that. And of course, I've never seen you look like that. Yeah. It's not something you do in everyday life, mm. is it? Yeah. yeah. But, and the, the fact of having the actor observing themselves in the mirror, they now know that's a possibility. Like, that's, a, that's another. That's another configuration for yes. your body to be in. Yes, yes, another type of, you know, little book in the shelf, yeah. the library. Yeah. See where it goes. And often we say, put your finger on your image and do the same thing mm. with your image. I, I don't know if it's become mythical. Mm. Now, now we're just doing all those of these things without the hand, so yeah. maybe it's also there. A transition stage. And we come to that with voice and body stuff too. Yeah. Now, isn't it funny? Is this amazing to watch this? Hmm. Now, of course, you know, you think. Speeches come in here. So we're going to do three speeches. Yeah. The first one is without not moving a molecule on your face. Extremely difficult, of course. And it's also quite difficult to keep all the other guys because, of course, nobody can actually hear the words mm. properly. So it's a real it's a challenge there. Yeah. That's pretty funny too. It's, just, yeah. Yeah, it's, it's quite entertaining mm. to do and to watch. Yeah. I mean, it's absurd. And that's not a bad thing. Mm. It's not self-important. It's not self Precious. Yes, absolutely. And it's also, and I said, no matter who you are, you should have a space where you can go grotesque. Yeah. Yeah. So here we said halfway home. So you can move something. And what's interesting here is that nobody ever gets this one part wrong. <laughs> yeah. Isn't yeah. that fascinating? Mm -hmm. From the word go, people will actually know what halfway home means. Yeah. yeah. Now, you think, how could you measure the space between there and, and neutral? But in fact, they all get it right. Yeah. And you've gone through this experience of definition, of, of identification of self. Of, yeah, so it's, um, it's an excellent test of uh, the work that's come before. Mm. But they will, they will pass with flying colours, so to speak, yeah. because now, of course, 
this is it, this is the killer, this is the one that counts because mm. this, what has caused all those things to change your voice mm. somehow? Yeah. Now, I don't care if it's not even apprehensible from the, from the, from the viewer. The point is something's changed, it must have changed. And something about you is obviously different. Mm. I hear you say, there's a way, I hope, maybe not. So I've taken the middle of the way, and can you keep this story alive? Yeah. So the mirror is just a tool. Absolutely. A transition tool, we call a bridging tool, mm. to enable you to experience this thing. And then can you actually go, okay, I'll keep this whole thing alive, and of course you can see the, the change it must have on you, because you're yes. not just staring at the space, you've actually still got this memory of the mirror. You've got a focal plane, so to mm. speak. Um, and that's the key thing. What does it do for you and to you, and what can you take away from it? Yeah. So. What would you say about that? Yeah, I mean, once again, it's one of those moments where we've just laid experience on experience. So we've spoken to the self, taken taken the feedback away, and the same as that transition moment's important, taking that away. Then can you give that to the audience? Yeah. Now can what, you let the audience into your experience? What I would like to have seen more than is actually taking it to the audience. Yes. Not just going right. to yours, but yeah. taking it to the audience. Mm. So it's one of those fine distinctions we often talk about, wh whether you're obeying a command or whether you're actually experiencing that yeah, feeling. Taking that the space around you to the audience. Yeah. And, it's a, and that you cannot um, overemphasize the importance of adding that to the turn. Mm. So you, I'm turning the space, but mm. I'm actually also turning the space. Yeah. And uh, I think that's where charisma comes from, those ability to mm. actually see yourself as that thing there is mm. turning as well as this. So yeah. we do a lot of exercise with sticks coming out of our center so we get yes. this sense of turning to the space yeah. to give it a greater physical value than just this shifting. Mm. Blender, blender, I think. So, so Scotty's got his eyes shut. Now, he's got to keep one hand on either of your hands. He can keep two, yeah. he can change over. Now, of course, in this moment of stillness, this carry, mm. he has to keep that extreme structure, much the same as the grotesquery of the red mm. right hand. And you, as the mind, has a, have a chance to sort of perambulate him around the mm. grounds of the mental hospital. Yeah. Um, what do you... Well, find? I think well, one of the... I think the, one of the most fascinating things about this exercise, it's a very physical manifestation of those, that moral obligation, I guess. And in, in, this, in this moment, kind of the, the balance of that is between ensemble members. Uh -huh. um, so that like the, the, the quality of sensitivity that you need to each other, both from the minder and from the blinder, to stay safe in the space, to gi give, give the person in front the... Uh, Give them space to fully explore their physicality mm -hmm. like that's i mean it's very definite it's very clear yes. you've got this physical contact and it's a it's a great object lesson i guess in that moral in that moral mm -hmm. obligation well i think the other thing is when you when you shut your eyes and we say you're not dancing to the music you're literally invaded by the mm. music you're literally effect, infected mm. by the music so once again we're going away from some sort of pretty dance routine mm. to something that's much more shamanic much mm. more sort of transformational yeah, and um, when people got their eyes shut, they're free. Yeah, as we all know. Yeah, so they're free and safe because the person behind is making sure they come to no harm. Um, but what I found, I suppose, at a secular tertiary level, how 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 the person, the mind, is actually having the same experience yeah. through feeling the, the the energy of the the blinder, um, and I think somehow communicating that with the audience in mm. a the sort of inverted way, I yeah. guess. Yeah. Um, and of course the, the minder can't the minder can't fully observe what the blind no, is going true. through. But is still like the obligation is is to communicate like through the open eyes the experience yes. of the the person with the closed eyes. So mm. I mean technically you're picking up on a lot of things. You're picking up on physical cues, on their on their um 
how their, their weight is shifting, all of that kind of stuff. Like there's, there's physical aspects to it, but you can't go through that checklist in your mind in the moment. So right. it, it's about how do I stay present? How do I pick up on the aura of the person in front of yes. me? And how do I communicate to the audience? And how do I stay with him? So yeah, he or she, because really they can cape of all sorts of mm. extreme experiences. Um, I have to say, we talk here, this crucial thing to all, everything we do is that that head for Scotty has to be still. So mm. no, even though he's moving, even though he's moving crazily, which he will do in a second, the head's got to be still. And this is for two reasons. We're trying to be still. <laughs> it's still still. So you can see the sense of awareness. So mm. stillness, once again, this is, this is not real life. Yeah. You can't get too immersed in what you're doing such that you don't survive. Yeah. And we know a lot of acting stuff has not been good for a lot of people. Yeah. Because they've just spun off into deep space and never been able to come back. Yeah. So now, he, now, now, of course, the, 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 the complicity between the two of you has got to be quite strong mm. because you've got to be very sensitive. He's in a very, very challenged situation. Yes. And not similar to um, something else, not only is, is he trying to figure out how to carry whatever he's left with through space yes. in, the, in these moments here, but also I, as the, as the minder, is doing the same thing. Yes. Like how, so. how are we going to carry this? Yeah. And you think consequences? Yeah. The consequences are how you sustain something after it's finished. Mm. Scotty hasn't done this very much. Yes. You can see me trying to <laughs> give him cues through my hands. Yes, right. But once again, it doesn't really matter. Getting this right is not really mm. important at all. It's what resides in the body, stroke spirit, mind, and the, mm. the act that counts. So now we have to say the speech, which of course isn't so bad. They say two speeches, one super quiet and one full. Yeah. This is not so hard, paradoxically. Yeah. But here it's such an important moment of, of keeping the voices the same with your partner. Yes. And then expanding your awareness out suddenly, well, not so much suddenly, but the, your kind of realm of experience has gone from a partnership into the ensemble. So yes. You have to listen to the ensemble as well. Yes. So you can see how Scotty's struggling here. Very, very hard. You think you're going to die. It's really not fun, actually. But once again, gives you a much more wider potential to what your speech is capable of. And what we say is just keep it going. Don't care what it sounds like. Who cares? It doesn't matter anyway. Now, of course, we look at this moment here, and that's always quite a, for me, a very profound yeah. moment, isn't it? We sort of think of what's he going through because you know this is a, i guess in terms of the wider perception of what a perform a training can be because mm. not only you're training the actor to develop their skills but you're training yourself as director yeah. thinking of mise on saying now yeah. i'm looking at this thing here and looking at him in that position and i'm sort of wondering i suppose and i would say that's a great moment of creative potential yeah. and i would say that all my exercises have come out of that moment there yeah. and thinking, well, what's that going to lead to? What's yeah. he doing? What can I do with this? And so I think it's a level of, I call it plasma, I suppose, yeah. like a better description of something that describes a, a tremendous amount of potential energy. And yeah, it's very fascinating. I believe that we as directors, like teachers, can actually use that experience of our expectation to be the actor in the context of what we're thrown in and what's been thrown back at us as actually a very, very um, a creative trigger. Absolutely. And having an ensemble of actors that have willingly gone through that experience over and over again, then when you get into the rehearsal room, then the, the possibilities are, that, well, they feel endless. They feel limitless. Well, they are, because you started much, most performances, really, at the end of the three-week run, it feels like a company. Yeah. And most of those actors will never actually see each other again, let alone work together yes. again. Um, so how much better would it be if you actually had this group of people at the start? Mm. Yeah. It's like a scratch football team versus a football team yes, that actually absolutely. does training. Yeah. 
And the training is not just about me kicking a ball better and faster yeah. or whatever, but it's also the interaction between us on the field, which yeah. is actually almost more important than the kicking of the ball. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I see a lot of this stuff as the same as watching a sort of pre-season football match between two teams <laughs> yeah. where they're sort of training and the, the, the head coach is observing this thing and looking, well, so-and-so works better with so-and-so. And he's yep. quite good at this. He's good on his left foot, so I'll stick him on the left wing and yeah. all those things. And I don't see why we can't take this as the same sort of equivalent creative mm. oversight. Yeah, absolutely. Um, now we're going to... I think we swap over. <clears throat> yeah. We... <laughs> So, always do any exercise we repeat so that everybody has the same you know, balance experience. Likewise, when we do the walks, we do left and right and backwards and forwards. So, here you're not trying to be attractive, you're just literally sort of using the power of the music. And here, I like to say that the guitarist is Dick Dale, who's mm. a precursor to Hendrix in many ways, and this was inspired by the sound of the mm. song. I got the you know, so this exercise the three antecedents. You had Nijinsky, you had Suzuki's orderlies, crazy yeah. orderlies, and then you had this amazing song where Dick Dale is playing the solos of guitar mm. that is outside the music. It's yeah. in its own world as well as still being in rhythm. Yeah. Would you say that? Yeah, yeah. I've heard, I mean, since you've mentioned it, I've heard it. Yeah, absolutely. you actually hear that. And that's not yeah. an easy thing to do for starts because most, that's not square, that's bifurcated mm. and wave particle duality. Yeah. Yeah, and it, I mean, it it mimics very closely that idea of that kind of individual communality. Like, you know, he's he's a part, he's a part of the band. Like, he's there, but yeah, he's but actually he's not out of time. And it's that, and but it's that individuality that's woven through it. Mm. So we say, try not to do any movements which are related to the one before. So the whole series yeah. are unconnected. And of course, this goes against all ideas of create, you know, sort of being, being you know, sort of melodic, yes. and sort of yeah, musical, yeah. being coordinated. Yeah. It's just, yeah. It completely explodes all those yeah. things. Because yeah. you can't really look good doing that. No. Nobody can look good doing no. that. And yeah, and that's not the, I mean, that's not the intention. No. Well, Diane Salento watched exercises like this because we spent a fair bit of time of it. Her. She's this wonderful actress, sort of mm. looks stupid and not care about it. Yeah, absolutely. Because, yeah, it seems you know Blanche's at this stuff, do they? Do you find that with your... Yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, well, I mean, some do. Uh, they don't kind of yeah. last very long in it uh, unless you give them give them something to be working on. Oh, yeah. But the, I mean, the, the, format, the format of the exercises is so simple and so easy to achieve that, I mean, no matter your physical ability, almost anyone can well, participate. Well, I, I believe so. We've had 65-year-old women do this exercise with as, as much zest and as much... Um, well, they're not going to stomp as powerfully as some young guy, but yeah. of course that's not the point. The point is what's the stomp Something. doing for them? So they've, yeah. had, they've had the same yeah. creative experience. And, yeah. you know, I've been doing this for 25 years. I don't feel any more comfortable doing this as, as you would. Yeah, so yeah. You, Sarah, who's also in the room, she's yeah. like done it four or five times. I guess here we can watch what's going to happen. Open this eye. So yeah, having this incredible internal battle here between mm. your aerobic but against that guest crew, treacherous like but you've kept it going you see you just there's no so there's no hiatus there mm. between what you're doing before and after mm. so the opening of the eyes which is quite a challenging thing we often say when you open your eyes mm. you are seeing the world for the first time and you are sort of revealing the work at the same time so this yeah and it's it's that kind of it's that kind of obligation or uh, opportunity for exploration that moves this work past just, I mean, the aerobic form. Mm -hmm. I mean, I was reminded of um, Keith Bain, who was the you know head of movement at NIDA for a long time. He said, that, like, mo movement itself doesn't get to the core of the actor's craft. Mm -hmm. Like, there has, there has to be something else going mm -hmm. on there. And, I mean, if, if it was just as, if it, if it was just the experience, if it was just, you know, um, saying words on top of an aerobics class, I mean, that's not that's not useful. I mean, no. maybe structurally there'd be something there. Yeah. But for an actor, like a creative being, like putting like putting yourself in a, in some other place, a poetic space, a mythical space, yeah. I mean, that's at the crux of what, what we do. Yes. 
and I would say whilst at the same time still being here and now. Mm. Mm. Yeah, and that's the, once again this duality, this dialectic between the wave particle, wave and the particle. Mm. And so that's, yeah, exactly. Mm. That's a, We've come to the end. We have come to the end. That's a good place to finish, I Thank think. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen.